Hello, and welcome back to Mia Chris. So today I thought we could take the time to talk about the PlayStation 4 and the PlayStation 4's reasonably small but quite impressive party game selection. Or more precisely, I'm going to be just throwing out some of my five favourite party games on the PS4. Yeah, the PS4, it's a great system. I love it. I've had it for a few years now and it does have a great lineup of single player led games as well as online multiplayer games. But one of the more underrated genres on the PS4 is the party game genre where you get a few friends together and you all just play a few games in local co-op, whether that be split screen or sharing a screen or whatever, you know. So yeah, let's get started. Uh, just a heads up, it's not exactly a top five list. These are just some of my personal favorites that I'm just kind of like recommending if you haven't tried them or whatever. Number five. We have Speedrunners. And now this is a game that I only recently got into as of a few months ago. Yeah, it's a party game. You get to play with like up to four people. And basically it's just a game where you have to just, just go around the track as fast as you can and outbeat the other guys and you know, come first ahead of everyone. It's not exactly who crosses the finish line. It's more who stays relevant in the screen the longest. As you'll see here, it's presented in a standard 16 by 9 screen, as with most games, and usually you'd be like, yeah, that's just my window into this world, you don't really second think it. But this game, staying within that screen really matters. If you're playing with like two or three, four players, for example, you all have to stay together and run around and the screen will basically will start shrinking over time and the players that are left behind, the system won't just split screen the local co-op so that they can still stay alive in their own separate screen. No, 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 if they exit the screen they're dead and out of the game it sounds really simple but it's so fun it's such a fast-paced replayable game with some really cool little mini pickups that you can use like the grab claw and such it's just really frantic and it kind of has a similar art style to you know the incredibles and their opening title credits or the ending credits so you know it just has this really cool vibe to it that's really fun number four overcooked now this is going to seem completely weird in contrast to the last game, but um, it's just basically a local four player co-op game where you all have to race against the clock to get the restaurant's demands in order. You work in the kitchen with up to four chefs depending on how many players you're playing with. You've got a little timer and you just have to keep getting the ingredients all sorted and you only get a certain amount of counters to put the ingredients on one by one. Basically one player will need like to be doing the cutting of the meat or whatever and another player will have to deal with getting all the stuff cooked and then another player will have to like maybe keep all the dishes clean whilst also maintaining the food orders and getting them out in time before the customers get angry or just give up. It's really fun, it's another frantic game. There is a bit of progression in the multiplayer as well with levels that you progress in your minivan and you have to get like up to three stars on them to unlock more levels and the levels can vary drastically. Like sometimes you'll just be working in what looks like a standard restaurant layout kitchen but where things get interesting is when the game changes it up and starts maybe having it on a boat for example and maybe the counters will start changing location so you'll have to keep up with that or maybe players will get locked off from others and you won't be able to pass the meat to each other and then you'll end up having to walk around that or maybe you'll be doing it on separate vans which will occasionally meet ups for you to run across and drop meat off to the other one or drop food orders off to the other one and then they'll split up so you've got to basically work out how on earth you're going to do this in the meantime it sounds crazy and that's the good thing it kind of plays like mini games but at the same time it, there's so much play value there so i don't know it's worth picking up i think if you can find it cheap it also had like some dlc for it which really adds to the longevity of this game. Doesn't have a platinum trophy which is a bit of a shame because I would actually like to watch the 100%. I might anyway but sometimes that can be a turn off for some people so. Anyway, number three. This one's a bit of a cheat in the sense that it's a bunch of other mini games all compiled into one package and that is Jackbox. Games like Fibbage and Bidiots and that all compiled into a separate package and there's like four Jackbox compilation games at the moment on the PlayStation Store, all of which are pretty great fun. They all contain five mini games in, and they are very hit and miss. Some of them are just genuinely rubbish, but some are genuinely great at the same time and worth replaying with your friends, such as Bidiot, Fibbage, Gespionage, Bomb Corp, and my personal favourite, Trivia Murder Party. They do all revolve around you using your phones. It's a bit like, you know, those new Playlink games, but it was a bit before that, and you all have to have internet access to the Jackbox website, so you can all, like, 
basically have joined the same server to play against your PS4 system. And you just basically type your answers or draw on your smartphone or whatever. It comes in useful in the games like Bidiots, where it's all about like, it's basically an art auction where you occasionally draw some of your own little pieces of art on your phone and then you put it up for sale and you try to see who can get the most money out of the sales on it. It's really fun. Again, it sounds weird and it sounds kind of boring, but it's such fun when you have up to three or four people playing with you. It's such a, just such a great time and like I said trivia murder party one of my personal favorites it does play more along the lines of like a tri typical trivia game where you just get questions and you have to answer the right question but where this differs is it's kind of in the setting of like a saw game but as a trivia party game as opposed to oh yeah you have to survive these traps you have to basically answer the question correct or you risk getting kicked off the game and killed off and yeah the Jackbox mini games all have some great humor in there as well so might be worth checking out. I'd recommend Jackbox 2 and 3. I haven't played 4 and I did think the first Jackbox compilation was a bit iffy with not really that much there. But when they come down on sales like on the PlayStation Store, really worth picking up for like just a few pound. It's, it's really cool. I could probably actually do a whole top 5 list on my favourite Jackbox games. Anyway, number 2. Gang Beasts. Another recent addition to the PlayStation Store in general, it's probably one of the most fun times I've had with friends in recent memory, uh, as sad as that might sound. But um, there's so many genuine bits of just funny moments that just come naturally and are completely unscripted within the game because it's all down to the mechanics of the game and the characters in the game which play kind of like a drunk little blobs with the arms and legs and you have to control them and you kind of control the limbs a bit individually not to the extent of like Octodad or anything but a similar sort of thing where you control the hands individually and you can control which one you grab and pull and again these games might sound a bit weird if you haven't played them before but I don't know <laughs> there's something super appealing about them. Like, the levels are a bit varied in Gang Beasts. Granted, there are only like eight or something like that, something ridiculously small, but they all have a lot of replay value in them. Some of my favourite levels being the elevator, uh, the truck one, or the one where the fan starts spinning and you get dragged into the air and you all have to like fight out in the air before you get dropped back down and maybe land on the ground or not. Again, sounds weird, but it's so fun. I'm not really into those sort of Mortal Kombat games or anything like that. I'm not really into fighting games personally. I don't have anything against them. I just, they're not really my preference of choice. But for some reason, Gang Beasts kind of molds that into this cooperative play. You're in an arena and you just fight it out to the death and see who wins. And, it's, and it can be kind of brutal every now and then. I don't know. I can't really explain it as well as I want to. But just check it out. You might have to wait for it to come down in price because it is a bit pricey at the moment at like £16 or something, but it'll be down in price sooner than later, so. And now, number one. That's you. That's you. <laughs> I do love playing this one. I've put so many hours into this with my friends. I think this is a PlayStation exclusive because it's part of the PlayLink games. This did get a physical release and I do have the physical release, but I also have it digitally because it's currently free on PlayStation 4 if you have PlayStation Plus. It's been free since before Christmas and it's still free to this day. I would hurry up and get it because it might not last that much longer. It might be out by, this, by, by the end of this month, but it's really worth having. I love this game. In terms of gameplay, you have to have your smartphone again. Uh, it doesn't really play off the DualShock 4, but you all have to make sure you have smartphones, individual smartphones, and you have to download an app, which can be a bit of a turn off because not everyone has the storage capacity to keep apps on their phone like me. <laughs> but it is worth the download, believe me. It is another trivia game, a bit similar to the Jackbox Trivia Murder Party game. But this one feels very polished. It has brilliant art style throughout. Brilliant graphics as well, especially com considering what type of game it is. A great narrator who helps you throughout the game and basically you know, presents the game as a game show. And it does have a nice variety of different levels to maneuver throughout the game. Whenever I get round to playing it, it's usually with only three people, but you can play with up to four, I think that is. I would heavily recommend playing with three or four people because you just get lost in time. You just, you just play it. You play one whole game and that's maybe like 15 to 30 minutes. And then you end up playing another one because you're like, well, that, that went over too quickly. Let's play another one. It's basically a game revolving around the idea of taking selfies of yourself, 
but based on captions that the game will give you. Like, for example, take a photo as if you were a fisherman, and then you take a photo as if you were a fisherman, like, oh, I've got my fishing rod. And then, then it'd send it off to one of the other two players and they'd get a new caption with it and they'd have to use the smartphone device to draw and colorize it into their new caption. And then you would like nominate who got the best drawing out of those three and it would do it with each player and then it would send it to the main PS4 unit and then the doll pop up and it'd probably ask questions around this creation that has been created between the two or three people. Again, it sounds stupid. It's just so much fun. I know I'm saying that about all of them, but these party games are fun and that's what you want from these games, to have fun with your friends. And I don't think you can get much better than these five games and especially with that you, especially considering it's free at the moment. Yeah, I didn't think I would like this one as much when I when it first came out because it was like free and I was like, oh, okay. It's something to play with friends, I guess. And then I just fell in love with it. I'm playing it all the time whenever I get a chance. And it was so good that I had to get it physically even though I already had it for free on PlayStation as a digital game. Really worth picking up if you haven't already. Yeah, that's it. What do you guys think? Have you played any of these? Do you like any of these? Is, do you, are you into party games? Is it even worth you having party games? Do you have any friends? I mean, I don't, but I just have to use Kathleen and my brother, the dude. They were basically the friends I was referring to earlier, as sad as that sounds. Yeah. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. I hope you at least kind of enjoyed the video. Why not leave a like and subscribe? I know I hate it when people ask that, but why not? You know, it's me and Cat Chris is a small channel and if you found this video for whatever reason, why not give a look at the rest of my video content? You might like something. It would be worth subscribing if you did like this video because I am planning on making a follow-up video to this of another top five favorite games of mine in the party games or whatever, just in general about PS4 and such. I might even do a PSVR version of this because I have got a few party games that are in PSVR that I really admire. Anyway, thanks for watching and I guess I'll see you in the next video. Bye.